Hello and welcome to Ikike Digest on Home Ec TV. I am Kome Odomo. On Ikike Digest, we aim to continuously bring to light environmental issues as it affects policies, communities, and our food system. We, ho we hope to educate our listeners with adequate information. On today's episode, we will be looking at environmental genocide. What's environmental genocide is something that we will find out in course of this interview. We know that fossil fuel depend dependency has left negative environmental footprints and causing residents to suffer untold hardship and several health implications. The Bioso State's Oil and Environmental Commission issued a comprehensive report titled An Environmental Genocide in May 2023. After three years of investigation, based on hundreds of testimonies from members of communities in oil and gas extraction sites, forensic and social scientific research and extensive review of existing documents, the Commission presented 10 recommendations from cleanup and restoring the environment, legal and regulatory framework and recovery plan to give the people of Bielsa and the broader Niger Delta a chance to thrive and benefit from post-oil transition. And with me in the studio to critically examine this topic, environmental genocide, is Dr. Isaac Asume Osoka. Dr. Isaac Asume coordinates Social Action International, an organization promoting resource democracy, human rights, and livelihoods of marginalized communities in West and Central Africa. Dr. Isaac Osoka previously coordinated Oil Watch Africa, a network supporting communities impacted by petroleum industry on the continent. He has participated in several international conferences and was a panelist at the United Nations Experts Group meeting on the use of non-renewable resource revenues for sustainable local development. Dr. Isaac holds a doctorate degree in environmental studies and has taught in the York University and Carlton University, Canada. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And so we're looking at the environmental genocide. What do you say constitutes environmental genocide? Thank you, Kume. Uh, the Biosa State Oil and Environment Commission titled its report, Environmental Genocide. And uh, the reason is because after about four years of investigation, study, involving uh, testimonies, taking testimonies from community members across all the local government areas in Bias State, you know, commissioning studies, you know, from experts, including health experts, toxicology studies, about six, 1,600 blood samples were taken from people in Bias State to, to, to study. And the, the findings, the findings of all of these studies show the extent, the extent of damage that has been done, you know, to the environment and to the people of Bayelsa State, you know, by oil oil companies that have operated in the area for for about seven decades, and in 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 titling that report environmental genocide, it is because you know of the appreciation that uh, there is systematic and deliberate deliberate attempt to to destroy the environment by international oil companies that understand, they understand the impact of what they are doing. You know, we have a situation where it was discovered that there are toxins in the environment of the of Bielsa State, in the air, in the water, in the soil of Bielsa State. In one instance, it was found that chromium which is a carcinogenic substance, this is something that can cause cancer in people, exists in the food chain of, of Bielsa State at levels that exceed you know, up to 1,000 times more uh, uh, than the, what the, the World Health Organization recommends. And this is what, what is the food chain in, in Bielsa State, that people are ingesting food, yet the fish in, in some of the, these communities that, that, that we, we examined, you know, contain chrom chromium, you know, the, the fishes, you know, the, 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 the farm produce. And this has been going on for a long time. When you have a situation where industrial activity in, in a large scale, over a large, you know, long period of time, you know, is causing such destruction, then it's genocide. It's genocide because the, the oil companies understand, 
you know, they are not, they are not fools. They understand that the, the harm that they are causing to the, their environment. The government of Nigeria understand that this has been, been going on. And over the years, all they attempt to do is to limit standards. You know, Nigeria has been a, a, a place, in the Niger Delta, where Shell has recorded their lowest production costs over the past decades. All in all, in all the operations worldwide, you know, the operations in Nigeria is the most profitable because the cost of production is very low. And the reason why the cost of production is so low is because they, they reduce standards of operations in, in this area. You know, where pipelines have to be replaced after a few years in Bielsa State and other parts of the Niger Delta, but in this case, we examine Bielsa State, pipelines have not been, in some cases, have not been, you know, uh, uh, replaced for up to 50 years. And these pipelines, you know, become weak, they are easily corroded, and they spew and, you know, like leak crude oil into the environment continuously. And it is not just oil pollution that, that, that is the issue, even though oil pollution is, I mean, the, the, the rate of pollution is staggering, that we found. You know, Bayelsa State has a population of about, you know, just over 2 million people. And if you examine the, 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 the figures, we're talking about figures that are, that, are, that are released by the Nigerian government through their agencies like the NNPC, for example, the, the old, the former Department of Petroleum Resources, the DPRO. And even though some of those figures are contested, you know, can be contested by, by other experts who have examined the situation on the ground. But if you use those fig figures, you, you find that over the years, that at the per capita level, that for every woman, for every man, for every child in Bielsa State, you know, there has been one and a half barrels of oil spilled in, 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 into the environment. You know, this is staggering. You, there is nowhere else in the world where you have this, this level of, of pollution. Now, let's talk about, we've been talking about this whole implication. Can we highlight some of the, the testimonies that you got from these community people? The, the government of Bielsa didn't uh, attempt to establish the fact of pollution. We understand that everybody knows that the Niger Delta is massively polluted. Mm -hmm. you know, but what the government wanted to establish is the, the extent of pollution, uh, the impact of pollution, you know, and the causes of pollution. Why, why, why has this happened? What are the, the regulatory uh, failures that enable this kind of pollution to take place over such a long period of time? Um, and what can be done to prevent further pollution. But when we went in and examined the, the evidence, when we spoke to the people, you know, after visiting the communities and seeing for our side, you know, because even though we've been working around these issues, some of us have been working on these issues for a long time, being in the commission opened, you know, giving access to a large area over the, the period, you know, that we visited by us again and, and, and again. And it's, it's shocking. It is, it's shocking, uh, the, the testimony from people, uh, the stories that we hear, the increase in rates of cancer, you know, in, in the different communities. This, that is the story, every community, you know, you hear the stories of increased rates of cancer. You know, these are, these are experiences that, that they didn't have before. There are people talking about respiratory illnesses, yeah. miscarriages among women, but until now, there was no data, there was no scientific basis to establish that it is it's indeed, even though the people suspected that oil pollution could be uh, a, a, a cause for some of, these, some of these challenges. But the, the data, the data from the toxicology studies, you know, and other health studies that, that, we, that we commissioned established that, that in, indeed that, that uh, there is a connection between what is in the environment, the food that the people eat, the water that they, they, they drink, the air that they breathe, and what they are going on. One of the things that, uh, the, the, one of the points that the commission made is that there is need for further health study. There is need for further health study, and uh, we, we hope that the Bielsa State Government, first of all, and the federal government of Nigeria will initiate the process to make those in, in, in extra uh, health studies uh, possible. We we had stories of and testimonies of uh, community displacement. You know because the the destruction the destruction wrought by oil activity in Bielsa State is not just 
on the natural environment. The communities have been dislocated over the, 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 the past decades. The basis, the basis for survival, the livelihoods have been decimated. You know, people that depend on fishing and farming cannot, cannot, cannot you know, engage in productive activity anymore. Yeah. And the worrying aspect is that even though petroleum products, you know, crude oil, you know, natural gas is extracted from the land of Bielsa and other parts of the Niger Delta and exported to, to Europe and other, other, other part of, parts of the world, the people of Bielsa do not have access to energy. If you are in, in a community in the creeks of, of Bielsa State, you don't have access to electricity. You know, if there's a bakery in, in, in brass, mm -hmm. that bakery doesn't have access, access to, to electricity. And, and you have a situation where in the midst of impoverishment created by the, the destructive activities of the oil companies, you know, and the lack of employment opportunities for, for young people, you know, we also found that some youth have resorted to, to what has been called artisanal refin refin refining of petroleum products, which contributes, which, which exacerbates existing pollution in, in, in the area. Why? Because they have to get energy. Because the bakeries need fuel, mm -hmm. you know, because people need electricity in their homes. Mm -hmm. You know, there are motor, if you go to Yenagua, the capital of Bielsa State, people move about with motorbike, it's the taxi, the motorbike ta taxi, or the, the bicycles that are called locally Keke Napep. This, these vehicles run on fuel, which is not always available Available. because of the chronic scarcity of petroleum products in Nigeria. The refineries in this country, owned by the federal government, owned by the NMPC, which is now a, limit, you know, a, a, a commercial entity, have not functioned for decades because of the corruption in, in, in the system. And this has denied people you know, like, in Nigeria, the urban poor depend on kerosene for, industry, for domestic fuel. Without kerosene, people cannot cook in the cities, in the urban, urban areas where they don't use firewood. Mm -hmm. But the, the Nigerian state, you know, and its agencies cannot pro, you know, provide kerosene in, in the market. And so mm -hmm. what has happened is that young people in their own way who have been dispossessed have now started, you know, we understand from the testimonies that they receive, taking crude oil that has been spilled into the environment to, and, and processing it into a refined product in ways that are very crude that contributes to the destroying the environment. And the way that the government has responded to this challenge is a military method, sending in the Navy, sending in the, the army to army destroy these areas. facilities. Yeah. They see a, 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 an artisanal refining site and they set fire on it, you know, creating soot po pollution. You know, and in fact, they, they, they see a, a, maybe a boat that is carrying barrels of uh, refined products uh, from these artisanal refineries, and they just, they just, they just blow, blow it, they just burn it, you know, and empty the crudes into, into, the, into the natural environment. So it is the, it is the activities of the Nigerian security agencies that create most of the pollution from, you know, from, you know, this, this artisanal refining process. But in addressing artisanal refineries, we have to understand that what needs to be, you know, to be, to be resolved first and foremost is the access to energy. The question of access to energy of the people of Bielsa State, the Niger Delta, and other parts of Nigeria. You know, if you don't address access to energy, you know, uh, if you don't provide alternative, you don't provide alternative access of energy, you know, to, to the people, you know, and then you don't provide job opportunities, employment opportunities for people, it will be difficult to address this problem, particularly as, as, as pollution had become, had been made a, the mainstay in, in the area over the past years. People were already, unfortunately, this is unfortunate, but it seems as if people were already used to seeing crude oil in the environment. Everywhere you turn, everywhere you go, you will see crude flowing. So it wasn't something new. People have lived with that, unfortunately. There's gas flares that, that, that uh, you know, that, that dangerous. Uh, but in, 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 in some parts of the state, when there's gas flaring, people get close to gas flares, you know, to, to dry their, their gari, their cassava, uh, processed cassava because of the heat, 
you know, not, my, not, not considering that they are exposing themselves to dangerous toxins. You know, and this has been going on for years. And the oil companies like Shell have seen that go on over the past decades, and they have done nothing to, 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 to prevent that from happening. You know, the government have done nothing to, pre to prevent that, that, that from happening. And this has been good. And so this is, this, is, this is genocidal. It is genocidal because there is an understanding, you know, it seems, on the part of, 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 of capital and the state that the people don't matter. All that matter is the profit. All that matters is the flow of crude oil and the profit and revenues with it. If everybody dies, if everybody, you know, you know because the land is made uh, unproductive for the people and they leave, then it may be just convenient for the people. Uh, but the people matter. And we, you know, we, it is, it is a, the recommendation of the commission that deliberate, deliberate measures should be put in place. Uh, by the government of Bayelsa State in the first instance, the, the, the federal government of Nigeria that has jurisdiction over petroleum, uh, and the international international the, the governments of the countries where these this, this international oil companies have come from have a responsibility, have a moral responsibility to, in, to look into this issue and invest in redressing the, the damage that has been done over the past, the past, some of them unfortunately irreversible damage over the past decades. So we had recommendations from UNEP and also this, but we'll go on a short break. And when we return, you'll hear from Dr. Isaac Osoka how these recommendations can be put to use. Stay tuned. For those of us from Bielsa, which I used to refer to as Nozra Chairman, Nozra Chairman, please listen to this. As governor, I used to say that Bielsa was the pollution capital of the world. And if you read this report, you can't contradict that statement. And the governor will tell you that that description has not changed. So if you take Bielsa, all of us here from Bielsa, you take our blood samples, which was what part of what I authorized, and we may have to do more of it. The commission will communicate to you, Mr. Governor. If you take our blood samples, the reports you will have will be very different from those of us, even in this hall, who are not from there and who have not lived in Bayelsa or in the Niger Delta. And that's why King Dakono rightly said they are the living dead. The report that we saw, which the final report confirms, even in this report, authenticates that. So if you add all of this to what is going on, global warming, you will see that our challenges are far more. These vocations that we have passed down through generations taught us to be patient, to have respect for nature, and value for hard work. But the unchecked activities of the international oil companies have turned our prolific rivers and fertile soil of Bielsa State into a wasteland. And this, as you all are aware, has been confirmed by the BISOC, the Bielsa State Oil and Environment Commission. The fight for the Niger Delta's environmental survival cannot be reduced to mere to shadow boxing. It demands concrete action unwavering commitment and collective responsibility. Let me be clear on this, that as a government, we are prepared to implement the recommendations of this commission 100%. Welcome back. You had the governor of Bayelsa State addressing the people on how the recommendations from the research will be put into use. And before we went on the break, we were going to ask Dr. Isaac what um, the recommendations from the UNEP reports and this recommendations, were, what, what were these things that you handed over to the government, comparing both research? Okay. Um, before the, the Bielsa State Oil and Environment Commission, um, the United Nations Environment Program had done uh, similar study in Ogode land, land yes. in River State. If you if we examine the 
the findings of the UNEP report in Ogoli land, we see that, for example, benzene was found uh, in in water in uh, in parts of Ogoli land uh, in uh, that exceeded World Health Organization limits by a factor of about nine hundred. You know, and this is benzene is a dangerous, dangerous substance that exists in water that the people drink. You know, we are seeing, you know, in the case of bioelectric uh, chromium, uh, that exist, you know, exceeded, you know, it, it's 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 scandalous, scandalous amounts of 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 toxins that exist in you know, between Ogoni land and and Bialsa state, and uh, it is reasonable to to expect that whether it is Delta states or other parts of river states or a bomb state that you find if you if you do an assessment if you do a study that you find similar similar results and so that it is it is exciting uh, encouraging to see the governor of Bielsa state make the kind of commitment that he has made publicly mm -hmm. you know on the you know the occasion of you know the, the way we unveiled when the report was unveiled to the public the Nigerian public Another interesting thing to note is that the commission was established in 2019 by Governor Dixon, who handed over to, to the current governor, uh, Diri. It is very common in Nigeria uh, to see governments abandon projects, projects of their their predecessors yes. Yes. but in this case the the governor continued to encourage the work of the commission and have accepted its recommendations uh, in fact the the state executive council of bielsa state has adopted the the report in its in its entirety uh, and so we will we will expect we hope that the government will will actually, actually take the necessary steps in the coming weeks and the coming months to implement the recommendations. We recognize that petroleum falls under, you know, it's a federal jurisdiction. It is the responsibility of the federal government to, to regulate, regulate, to regulate oil and gas. Yes. Um, and so most of the recommendations that we've made can only be implemented if there is political will on the part of the federal government. So for emphasis, says, can you just highlight these recommendations so we know them? Okay. The, the, the main recommendation to note is the investment that needs to be made. Um, that Bahasa is so devastated, you know, the, the natural environment, uh, in terms of the cleanup of polluted sites, uh, in terms of providing um, alternative livelihoods uh, for the people in the communities, uh, in terms of in terms of investing in energy transition provided because i mean even though Bayasa is sitting atop oil and gas the people don't have energy it's, you know why we were presented the report to the government and people of Bayasa state the report we got is that they had not had electricity the national grid collapsed you know, for well, over three months, months. Yes. over three months yeah. and so Bialsa is a recommendation of the commission that the Bialsa should begin, should even serve as an example to other states in, in, in Nigeria that you can, you can, you know, use renewables and other sustainable energy to address the, the energy assets. Is it stated of its somewhere people. in the recommendation? It is, it, it is, it is, it is, because okay. oil is going to become the coal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, in, the, in the near future, Nigerian oil will be, will be abandoned. Nigerian oil will be abandoned and nobody, nobody, because the world is moving away from fossil fuels. That is the reality. Climate change is real, and the world, you know, even though the response is slow globally, but we're looking at what is happening in some parts of the world, and we see that, you know, there's, there's action. There's, move, there's some, some movement, and sooner or later, nobody is going to pay attention to our oil. Uh, so Biasa needs to begin, Biasa needs to begin to invest in its future. You know that looks away from from it, an oil dependency, and, and that is important. And so, what the, the commission has recommended is that a minimum of twelve billion dollars is needed over a period of twelve years, at least, to address 
you know, had to reverse some of the, the, the impacts of oil and gas exploitation over the past years. And this is, this is money that cannot come from the taxpayers of Bayelsa State. This is money that should come from the international oil companies themselves. Because it is the polluter that must pay. The Niger Delta has been the most profitable space for Shell globally. You know, Shell became a, a, a global oil giant in large part to the profits that they made from the Niger Delta of Nigeria. And to suggest that they should contribute, you know, part of the 12 billion over this is, 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 is not, it's not, there's not, there's nothing can tell us about that. If you examine what, what oil companies pay, you know, to address spills in the United States, you see that 12 billion is a small, is a small amount. So let me drag you to the PIA, where a session of the PIA says that um, host communities will pay a percentage or forfeit their money if there's an issue of sabotage. What if the, the oil companies come up tomorrow to say all of these spills are caused as a result of sabotage? What's, what will happen? Soon? That's an old story. That's, I mean, talking about the PIA, um, to, to that provision of the PIA is, is a scandal. It's an outrage. Uh, it's an outrage. It's, um, it is total and complete disrespect for people that have been victimized by, by oil activities over the past decades to suggest that they be held liable the people of Bayelsa as a whole, the people of the Niger Delta as a whole, should be held liable for whatever the system decides in sabotage is, is an outrage. You know, it's an outrage and we, we, we have to continue to point out that that is, that, that is wrong and that that aspect of the Petroleum Industry Act has to be, has to be changed. You know, there are, other areas of you know in, in the petroleum industry act that are problematic, but and that is that is one of them. That is one of them. Uh, there's all the talk about you know host communities fund uh, and all of that. That is if, if you look at it very critically, there's a problem with that because what we are saying is that the law of Nigeria is granting commercial entities like Shell the authority to act as a government in in their sites of oppression. You are granting commercial entities the right to establish institutions that will be responsible for the development of the area. That's supposed to be the institutions of that is the responsibility of government. There's nowhere in the world where that is done. You are empowering corporate rule by so doing. And that is that is wrong. That, that is wrong. So, and before we end this conversation, let's talk about divestments. We see that these companies are divesting, and um, we know that they are selling off their assets to the Nigerian company. You are very correct, Kome. No international oil company operating in Nigeria is divesting from Nigeria. Every international oil company operating in Nigeria is increasing their investment in oil and gas, in petroleum, in Nigeria. What they are doing is attempting to move away from their onshore operations into the deep the waters where there are no communities to deal with, where the activities cannot be regulated, really. Because we have a situation where in seven decades, the Nigerian state doesn't have the capacity to determine how much oil is produced. Yes. That is a fact. Yes. You know, there is no metering infrastructure in all, you know, connected to any of the oil fields in Nigeria or the pipeline system. So whatever Shell is telling the Nigerian state that this is how much oil we are, we are, we are exporting, that is what, 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 what Nigeria accepts. There is no, the Nigerian state has not had the capacity to determine how much oil is actually produced or exported. And so when they can't do that onshore, where you can actually see the facilities, is it offshore 
that no. So, they, they, so what what the oil companies are doing is is a scam. It's a scam to to abandon their liabilities. They understand that it cannot be business as, as usual. usual. You know that communities are beginning to demand for justice more and more. So com communities, some communities, including the Gori communities, have secured justice compensation from courts in in Europe. And so what these companies want to do is to quickly dump their assets on opaque and so-called indigenous oil companies in, in Nigeria. Let us take the example of Shell. Shell is selling off its assets to a company called, or wanting to sell its assets to a company called Renaissance. And this is a company that is owned now, set up by past executives of Shell. These are people that have worked in Shell, that have just moved away from Shell to establish these this, this entities. And the fund that they will use to buy the, the assets of Shell will be provided by, by Shell, Shell itself. Shell is loaning you money to buy its assets. And it will be criminal, it will be criminal for the Nigerian regulators to endorse that deal. You know, for the federal government of Nigeria to accept that deal uh, is to, to expose more than ever the complicity of the state in the, in, the, in, the, in the marginalization of the people of this country. We've heard how environmental genocide deliberately destroyed nature and displaced and forced into extinction species that should be protected. It's been an interesting conversation with you, Dr. Isaac Osoka, and we hope that uh, we will meet with you again to share your wealth of experience with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Kumi. And we've come to the end of today's episode, and we hope that you have found it very interesting. Do well to visit our website on www.homef.org and follow us on all our social media handles on Echo Homef. I remain your host. Come, Odomo.